can see, just I can hear just from the, a uh, little more volume, please. I can hear just from the laughter that you enjoy that clip, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. It is so cute. Uh, my heart goes out to those children. They're grasping, trying to get the right answers. And they had some of it right, didn't they? Of course, honestly, they missed some of it. They missed some of those right answers. And they were uh, confused about Christmas. And we know that between movies and commercials, sometimes there's some storybooks, uh, even for adults, uh, hearing all the, this, this messaging from the world, uh, the truth can get a little fuzzy, can't it? It can just get a little fuzzy. It gets a little obscure because we're getting so much other information. Back up here. There we go. There we go. All right, that's it. Of course, uh, you see on Christmas Day, or the term Christmas, we have the, the name Christ in there, don't we? Christ. How many had a busy, uh, busy ske- uh, last week or two shopping, really busy, crazy? Raise your hands. It's okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's online. Sometimes you're going to Maryville. Sometimes you're going to Plymouth, whatever the case may be, running kids. There's all kinds of family movies and connections. There's advertisers that are telling us what Christmas is really about. Again, there's a lot of messaging that has bombarded us, even as adults, for the, Christian, for the Christmas season. The real message is this. In Luke chapter 2, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. He went to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them, no place for them in the inn. This is Christmas. This is Christmas. The problem with these various years, multiple years of the world uh, giving this us this other information about Christmas, what has happened is, is Christmas has been repurposed. You know what repurposed is. You have something that has a particular purpose or use, and then it gets used for something else. As Jay was talking about earlier, about the purpose of Christmas. My Lord, it's Christmas, Christ, and miss. In fact, there's a movie even out today. Uh, I think it's out right now. Uh, as soon as the title hit me, it's about Charles Dickens' life. I believe the title is, you know, he wrote, the Chris, you know, he wrote you know, Scrooge and wrote the Christmas story. And the title of the movie talking about his life and his work is The Man Who Invented Christmas. The Man Who Invented Christmas. And see, this is what we get bombarded with. You know, we get all these commercials, all these stories. You know, you know what? Honestly, with these commercials, do you know what? It's not called Lexmas, is it? It's not called Lexmas. And with all these really great movies, there's a lot of family movies and, and love stories out about Christmas. There's like 40 or 50 of them playing all the time. And, and really, I, this is a great thing, but it's not the whole enchilada. You hear this somewhere in the story, you're going an hour, hour and a half, there's trouble, things are happening, and at the end they say, well, you know, this is what it's all about. It's about family. And yet this is not called together, miss, is it? No. It's not called family, miss. Although family is extremely important all the time. Anyone? It's Christmas. Christmas. And it's so easy to repurpose Christmas. One of my favorite uh, memories, uh, even today, I just love hearing it, the voice of Bing Crosby. How many like the voice of Bing Crosby at Christmas time? I have great memories that when I was a kid, uh, hearing him uh, sing a 
Have your, let me sing it together for a moment. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your hearts be light. From now on, we'll all be together. And then it picks up again. Uh, someday, uh, someday, we will all be together as the fates allow. As the fates allow. In Greek mythology, there are three supernatural beings called the fates who control the destiny of men and God, small g. So what I'm saying is there is a lot of false information coming our way. I mean, you see what I'm saying, right? No, I'm not saying don't listen to Bing Crosby this season, okay? But what I'm saying, you get my point. And what happens is with all this information we're getting and the craziness that we're experiencing trying to get the gifts, get everything in place, sometimes, sometimes, because of all this, we have the same type of answers that these kids did earlier on in the clip. We're confused about what the real answer is because of all this diversion. It's Christmas. The birth of Christ. Jesus as King of Kings. In fact, shortly after his birth, we read, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king? That makes that a pretty special birth, doesn't it? Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east, it rose, and we have come to worship him because he is king. And one day as Jesus was being interrogated on trial at the end of his ministry and his, his adult life, standing before Herod, we read, Then Pilate said to him, You are a king? And Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born, as Jay was mentioning, for this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear, to bear the truth, to bear witness to the truth. For this purpose, the ultimate purpose, not to be repurposed, amen? amen. Even when Jesus died on the cross to the embarrassment and the frustration of, of the Jewish leaders, the Romans' guards wrote and put over his head this charge against Jesus, which read, this is Jesus, what? King of the Jews. King. A long time ago, when I was working in Valparaiso, I had a friend who had a co-worker. And I was trying to encourage her to, to go to a worship uh, for Christmas, especially uh, somewhere in her neighborhood, someplace that was close. I knew the minister. I knew the church, and uh, she loved it. She went to the Christmas service. She loved it. She's hearing about the, the, the story about the, the baby, the birth of Jesus, the manger, the angels, the shepherds, the magi. Then she said, what happened was, though, then the minister went and started talking about the cross. And she said, I got sad. I got depressed. Why did he do that? And I told her just very gently, in a, in a, very, in a short statement, I told her this is what makes Christmas Christmas. See, Christmas is not just about a baby that was laid in a wooden manger. It's also about the baby who grew up to be a man and was nailed to a wooden cross. But it's not just about a man who was nailed to a wooden cross. It was also about Jesus who was buried in a stone-cold tomb. But it's not just about that stone-cold tomb. It's about Jesus who was raised from the dead. Amen. King of kings. Jesus who told us that he would come back for us. The Old Testament prophets prophesied of his kingship. He was worshipped as a king by the Magi, called king by Pilate, and eternally a testimony on the top of his cross that this is Jesus. He is king. 
but not just a king, the king. The king. As we read about, about this at the end of it all, Revelation, we read that he is king of kings and lord of lords. And this, this is what makes Christmas, Christmas. Amen? Amen.